Hey everybody, we just got back from an awesome five week road trip from Arizona to Alaska. 8,800 miles. Trust me, a trip to Alaska is one that you won't soon forget. If you thought about making this trek yourself, or you just want to enjoy the ride, sit back and enjoy the journey. We started our first day by driving from Phoenix to Page, Arizona. Where are we at? Horseshoe Bend. Horseshoe Bend, Page, Arizona. Then on to Glen Canyon Dam Overlook. The next morning, we headed out from Page, Arizona to Provo, Utah. We made a quick stop for a view of Lake Powell, then back on the road. Today, we drove from Provo, Utah to Dillon, Montana. When we got to Dillon, we stopped by the museum. And then hiked Clark's Lookout. How come you're breathing heavy there, Ramblin? <laughs> They're trying to kill me. They're trying to kill me on our second day of travel. This is third. Third day of travel. <laughs> okay. Uh, what a view, though. Look at this. Yeah. I, this is um, Clark's Lookout from Lewis and Clark. Clark State Park. Clark State Park. So we started out in Provo, Utah this morning, went through Idaho, and ended up in Montana. Tomorrow, we're going to be crossing the border to Canada. That's if you let me live long <laughs> enough. We'll be in Canada. I need you for the bears. <laughs> no. <laughs> the next day, we drove from Dillon, Montana, and made it to Lethbridge, Canada. You'll want to change over to kilometers at the border. This is the Lethbridge Viaduct Railroad trestle. It opened in 1909. It's the longest and highest of its kind in the world. There were fields of brilliant yellow canola flowers everywhere we went. They were so beautiful. The next day we were on the road from Lethbridge to Banff National Forest. We spent three nights in Banff. Since we were early, we went out exploring. We hiked to the old ghost town of Bankhead. The next morning we visited Lake Minnewanka. Most visitors don't realize that under the lake was once home to a bustling lakeside resort town before it was flooded. Known as Minnewaka Landing, because of the ice-cold glacier-fed waters, wood survives quite well here. Many of the foundations, sidewalks, a chimney, a cellar, bridge pilings, and more are still there. Part of the original dam, built in 1895, also remains. The waters here are crystal clear and draw approximately 8,000 divers to explore the ruins each year. Then we were on to hike Takaka Falls, but first we had to get there. Don't tell you what. The bus is going up. It's like. What bus? Right there. The 
it's backing up. Buses are buses and motorhomes aren't allowed up here. Don't tell me this bus is is backing up the switchback. Look at this. Take a picture of that sign. This isn't bad. If you were on the bus backing up, now it would be bad. In the end, the falls were really beautiful. We came across this young lady who looked like a princess to me. She was live streaming and was so excited to be there. The next morning, we set out to explore the Bow River Falls and part of the trail. We then hiked about three quarters of a mile to the Johnston Canyon Lower Waterfall. treated to its beautiful turquoise waters. Next stop was Morant's Curve. It's a popular tourist stop. At certain times of the day, you can see the train coming around the curve, traveling along the Bow River. We headed to our next stop, Lake Louise. We got our first bighorn sheep sighting along the way. We checked into our hotel at Lake Louise, and the skies opened up with rain and hail. Normally, you have to take a shuttle to Lake Louise, but with the rain and being late in the day, the parking lot emptied out, and we were rewarded with a gorgeous view of Lake Louise and Victoria Glacier. The next day, we had reservations for the Columbia Ice Field Tour. We headed out early and drove the Ice Fields Parkway from Lake Louise to the Columbia Ice Field Tour. We had our first bear sighting on the way. The Ice Fields Parkway is reported to be one of the most beautiful drives in the world. Along the way, you can view an estimated 100 glaciers. The tour of the Athabasca Glacier was something I'll never forget. We rode in the big ice cat to get down to the glacier. Our guide said it was a 35 degree decline down the hill, one of the steepest in the world. So if, you want, so if you want, put your hands in the air and go, Woo! That's boring. That's boring. That's unfortunately not an option, folks. I do like my job. Oh. There's your answer. <laughs> That's the <laughs> We're at the Columbia Ice Fields right now. On the glacier, walking on the glacier. Awesome. They told us ahead of time to bring our water bottles and we could fill them up with glacier water. Did you get water? I got water. Bob remembers being here as a kid. The guide said that the glacier is melting at such a rate that it will be gone in about 60 years. After the tour, we headed to spend the night in Jasper. We saw these mountain goats just grazing along the road. We stopped at Tangle Creek Falls. Here's a picture of Bob standing beside the falls and you could see just how tall it was. Really beautiful. The next day we drove from Jasper to Dawson's Creek. Dawson's Creek is mile zero of the Alaskan Highway. The next morning we set out for Fort Nelson. We stopped at the old Kiskantawa Bridge. I hope I'm saying that right. This three-span timber truss bridge has a nine-degree curve that engineers designed to accommodate the highway's steep change in grade. After that, we stopped at Sasquatch Crossing for a cute photo op with Sasquatch. 
This black bear was just moseying along the side of the road. It was always exciting to see the wildlife. We stopped by Fort Nelson's Heritage Museum. Here's Bob at the museum beside the historic mile marker 300. Fort Nelson is mile 300 along the Alaskan Highway. The next day we drove from Fort Nelson to Watson Lake. We stopped at Tetsa River Lodge for some fresh baked cinnamon rolls. We saw a herd of bison and then some moose. We made it to Watson Lake to see the signpost forest. We're in Watson Lake and we're at the sign forest. And I'm gonna put on one of my stickers. I don't have a sign, so I'm gonna put a sticker on. But right now, it's uh, pretty smoky. I don't know if you can see in the video, but uh, smoke is really bad. Fires are uh, really causing the air quality to be very smoky here. So I'm gonna go put my sticker on. From Watson Lake, we drove to Whitehorse. Did a little exploring around the town before calling it a day. About this time on our trip, the sun doesn't go down until 2.30 in the morning. The sun comes up about 3.30. Just thought I'd throw that out there. We headed out early from Whitehorse on our way to Dawson City. We stopped by the Montague House. This is the Montague Roadhouse. It's a historic site along Highway 2. We're on our way to Dawson City. But this used to be a like a place for travelers to stop along their route. We fell in love with Dawson City. Every single street was lined with historic houses. If I could, I would wrap this place up and take it back to the States with us. The two houses pictured here are an example of what happens when you build a warm house directly on top of the ground here. It melted the permafrost and caused their foundations to shift, earning them the nickname of the Kissing Houses. You might have heard of the show Yukon Gold. Dawson City is where it was filmed. The show Gold Rush also filmed a season here. Dawson is one of the only gold mining towns that's still currently mining. We're coming up to the paddle wheel graveyard. There's three paddle wheel ships aground here and wrecked. This is a must see if you're visiting Dawson City. Very interesting site. After two nights in Dawson City, we took the ferry across the Yukon River then headed out across the top of the world highway. In case you're thinking of taking this drive, there's about a hundred miles of dirt road. It was a bit rainy that day. Combine that with the dirt roads, and this is what our forerunner looked like. We stopped at the Poker Creek Border Checkpoint, the most northerly land border port in the USA. We were officially in Alaska. We made a stop in the town of Chicken. Chicken was a was a cool little stop. Right. It's it's going there is you know somewhere in Alaska most people don't get to see mm -hmm. you know that. You know, and we've uh, we've talked to a few people that have done it, and it's been the highlight of their trip and everything. Yeah. So, another quick stop in Toke, then on to Delta Junction. This is the northern endpoint on the Alaskan Highway. The next morning, we were off to Fairbanks for three nights. We stopped by the North Pole on our way in and visited Santa's house. a highlight for me. We might have 
have spent some money while we were there. We also took a walk over to see Santa's reindeers. While we were in Fairbanks, we went to the Great Alaskan Bowl Company, where they specialize in making wooden bowls. Then on to the Alaska Raw Fur Company, where Bob bought a reindeer pelt that he affectionately named Donner, and a beaver pelt that we named the Bee. Then we made a stop at the Fairbanks Train Depot. The next day, we explored the Alaska Pipeline. We're in Fairbanks, Alaska, and this is the Alaskan Pipeline here. This is a viewing area that they made. This is very cool. Please don't climb on the pipeline. Oh my gosh, you, you would think that they wouldn't have to put signs like that, but people will do anything for a picture. Down here, it looks like it goes in, it's where it goes into the ground. In the afternoon, we took a riverboat cruise along the Chena River. Fairbanks was a lot of fun. Back on the road, our destination was Wasilla, where we spent two days. We took a trip to Independence Mine in Ghost Town. This is so beautiful, you guys. I can't even uh, describe how beautiful it is. If you ever get a chance to come and see this, I would say take that chance. We made a trip into Anchorage to just look around town. We drove by Earthquake Park and saw a large moose grazing in the tall grass. Then we stopped at Point Warzenoff Park and hiked down to the beach where we watched the jets take off right over our heads. The next morning, we stopped by the Iditarod headquarters. These guys are all in my main Iditarod team. They've all been dealt with me. There's a lot of companies that have the rides, but these are $10 a piece. I mean, how can you go wrong? It's so much fun. Next time, though, I think I would say uh, ride in the front if you can, because uh, you get the full experience in the front. Then we made our way from Wasilla towards Seward for four days. We stopped at the Alaskan Wildlife Sanctuary in Girdwood. This was a really special side trip. Seward is mile zero for the Iditarod Trail. 
While we were there, we hiked the Exit Glacier Trail. It's one of the most visited glaciers in the world. We're on our way to hike Exit Glacier. Well, this is about a two and a half mile hike, round trip, and they said it was about three, 300 to 400 feet elevation gain. Uh, well worth it. Uh, not too bad, you know, maybe an hour and a half yeah. hike. Yeah, I think so. Okay. You have to stop and take a lot of pictures. Oh, definitely, definitely. This awesome little restaurant was on our way out so we came back for dinner that night, and it was delicious. We left Seward en route to Palmer, stopping by Cooper's Landing on the way. We spent two nights in Palmer and then back on the road. We took the Glen Highway to Haynes Junction. We passed Madanuska Glacier and Destruction Bay along the way. We also crossed the border back into Canada. This was our longest day of driving. Due to the road conditions and construction, it took us almost 12 hours. When we got to Haynes Junction, Everything was closed. Bob had the forethought to bring emergency food with us, so we split a spaghetti dinner from the emergency food supplies. It was actually really good, or we were just really hungry. The next morning, we started heading back home, but not before the last bittersweet sightings of the unforgettable nature and wildlife in Alaska. Truly, the last frontier. Mm -hmm.